Social media addiction is growing exponentially, not only in the United States, but worldwide. On average, a person spends nearly two hours a day on social media. That equivalates to five years and four months of their lifetime. And within that time span, one could run 10,000 marathons or travel to the moon and back on 32 separate occasions. And what's even scarier is teens spend nearly nine hours a day on social media, equivalating to 23.4 years of their lifetime. 23.4 years. Now before I get into anything, what exactly is social media addiction? Social media addiction is defined as an uncontrollable urge to use social media, leading to a state where one is overly concerned when they are not online. As of 2020, 3.8 billion people use social media. And out of those 3.8 billion people, approximately 388 million people suffer from a social media addiction. We are addicted. And these large social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, are all using this addiction to manipulate our psychology and ultimately control our lives. Where does it all start? Now before I get into anything, I'm gonna ask you three questions. How long can you go before checking to see if you have any new notifications on your phone? Do you check your phone right when you wake up in the morning and right before you go to bed? And how many of you have considered deactivating your accounts? It all starts with artificial intelligence and algorithms and the engineers behind these algorithms. There are two types of artificial intelligence. There's simple algorithms and there's algorithms that are so complex they're categorized as intelligence. Ultim ultimately, we're giving these computers a goal setting. I want this specific outcome. And these computers are learning how to do it. And every day, they get smarter and smarter. And we've almost lost complete control over these systems. They're controlling us more than we're controlling them. And what's scary to think about is that these large social media platforms like Instagram, Facebook, and Snapchat are all driven by these artificially intelligent systems that are advancing exponentially and are out of our control. Social media is a new market in our economy that has never been seen before in human history because instead of a tangible product being sold, we are what's being sold. And more specifically, our attention is what's being sold. All of these social media platforms are competing for our attention. And the business model for these companies is to keep their users on their apps as much as possible. There are two markets that call their users, their consumers users, illegal drugs and software. They think, how much of this person's attention can we get? How much of your life can we get you to give to us? Because our attention is what's being sold to the advertisers who are investing in these companies, these companies are profiting off of how they're changing how we act, think, and ultimately who we are. Tristan Harris, a speaker in The Social Dilemma and former employee of Google stated, if you're not paying for the product, then you are the product. Why are we addicted? Everything you do online is being watched, it tracked, and monitored. What image you stop and look at, for how long you look at it. They know everything, from our personality type to whether we're an introvert or an extrovert. They know more information about us than has ever been imagined in human history. And all of the data that we feed into these systems have almost no human supervision. And they make better and better predictions of what we're gonna do and who we are as a person. What do they do with this data? They build models that predict our actions. The more likes, clicks, and activity that we have, the more accurate our model is. The model, once you have it, can predict what kinds of things that person's going to do, where they're gonna go, what videos they're gonna enjoy watching, what emotions tend to trigger you. This data allows for these large social media platforms to personalize what we see. And there are three main goals to these social media companies. One, engagement, meaning driving up usage and keeping us scrolling as much as possible. Two, growth. How can we get you to come back and share our platforms with your friends? And three, advertising. While all of this tracking of our users is going on, how can we make as much money as we possibly can? How is our addiction manipulated by social media? In the social media documentary on Netflix, Justin Rosenstein said, 
When you go into Google and type climate change is, there's going to be different results depending on where you live. We all see these completely different worlds across the screen because these computers are calculating what's perfect for each person. We are all operating on a different set of facts based off of what we see on social media. And when this happens, we can no longer consume information that contradicts with the worldview that we've already created. This introduces the idea of confirmation bias, the tendency to favor information that already confirms what we favor or believe. We end up completely ignoring the evidence that contradicts our beliefs, and we're stuck in our own echo chambers, an environment where a person only encounters information or opinions that reflect and reinforce their own. And the most prominent example of this is politics. A study at MIT found that fake news on Twitter spreads six times faster than true news. So now, we have no idea what's true. Social media manipulation has always existed. However, now, spreading false information and manipulation comes at ease. How does this manipulation affect our behavior? Tristan Harris said the technology is not the existential threat. It's the technology's ability to bring out the worst in society, and the worst in society being that existential threat. What we see on social media is affecting our world, no matter if you have these apps or if you don't. And social media also affects mental health. All social media platforms dig deeper and deeper into our psychology, specifically our younger generation's self-worth and identity. For teens, they have evolved to care about what other people think of us. We have curated our lives around a perceived sense of perfection because we get rewarded with short-term signals like likes, hearts, shares, and comments, and it conflicts with truth and self-worth. According to Jonathan Hyde of, from the New York NYU Stern of Business, there has been an increase in depression and anxiety for American teens starting between 2011 and 2013. There was about a 67% increase in the amount of older teens, girls ages 15 to 19, who were admitted into a hospital for self harm for preteen girls ages 10 to 14, there was a 189% increase, nearly triple. And what's even scarier is that this pattern is directly correlated and also the same as suicide. The older teens are up 70% and the younger preteens are up 151%. This pattern to blame is social media. Gen Z, kids born after 1996, is the first generation in history to have social media in middle school. How do they spend their time now? They come home from school and they go on their devices. There is now a more fragile, depressed, anxious, and less engaged generation. Teens who spend more than five hours on their phones are two times more likely to show depressive symptoms. And seven in 10 teens who use social media for over five hours a day are at higher risk of committing suicide and having suicidal thoughts. And it's scary to think about how this is only going to get worse from here. How is this dilemma affecting you? Is it affecting you? What about the people around you? How will this issue affect future generations? For me, I've noticed that over quarantine, not having the ability to see my friends normally took a toll on my mental health. And having all of that free time, social media was my way for passing time. My usage increased as quarantine progressed. And the moment when I decided I needed to implement changes was when I checked my weekly screen time. 26 hours on TikTok, 15 hours on Instagram, 9 hours on Snapchat. And that wasn't even counting the Netflix episodes I watched that week. From my personal experience, I learned that eliminating social media allowed me to focus on what I actually enjoyed doing. Once I became more confident and self-loving, I was able to live my life to the fullest. Academically, I focused and succeeded in my classes without social media being a distraction. I grew my relationships in school by not staring at my phone during lunch mods or free periods and instead shared laughs with my friends with whom I love dearly. At home, I was able to spend more quality time with my family. All of the special memories I made was because I took initiative by deleting the, most, the biggest distraction in my life. So where do we go from here? How can we permanently solve social media manipulation? There needs to be oversight. There needs to be control over these large, successful tech companies that are slightly controlling society as an entirety. We are building these codes and we have the ability and responsibility to change them for the better. 
So I'm going to conclude with this. Get off your phones. Get off social media. And stop wasting your time and go live your